time for Mike and Heather, your key radio morning show hosts, searching for ways to tap into the biblical truths to which all humans have access. Here to lead today's key verse conversation and to ensure they don't get sidetracked is your good friend and theirs, Pastor Matt Gould of Grace Bible Church in Springville, Utah. And it is Monday. Isn't that a wonderful thing? We get to start off a new week. And just because Mike is a good has a good way of starting out the week. Tell us what you just showed us, which was so awful you know, this, and disgusting. This is why we have the internet. Oh, yeah, man. Exactly. I, I'm, yes. I'm so glad Elgar created this thing. <laughs> Graphic video shows Komodo dragon swallowing monkey whole. Oh. You gotta have a good breakfast. That's what I learned. It's the most important meal of the day. This is so disgusting. It's not a little baby monkey. It no, is it's like, like a, a big old monkey. Big monkey. It's like a, it's like a daddy monkey. Yeah. It's, it's. It's a horrible thing to see and watch. And the nice thing is, like, right before we get on the air, Mike's like, you got to see this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look it up. You'll be happy you did. Uh, uh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. You might be happy you did. So, yeah. Head, head of... first, if case you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Matt, it's been a while since you've been here. It has, yeah. It has. Good well. To... That we, I mean, you've been here. I yeah. So oh. two two weeks ago when was we my, here. <laughs> my right. first official time back, but you guys weren't here. You I were know. both gone. Say thank you for coming in when we were here. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, Jeremy and I got to hang out and and fly through some technical difficulties together, and, oh, and we had a real party. You guys, you right. are professionals, which is awesome. Yeah, you were here on the fifteenth, talking about isn't Christianity. And religion in general, just a psychological crutch. Just a big old crutch. Yep. And we we landed on, yeah, yeah, it is absolutely. <laughs> that's all it is. Because that's that's actually because we have no power in and of ourselves, and we are leaning on Jesus for everything. That's <laughs> ah, see. Uh, no, uh, yeah, it was it was a good conversation. It was fun. Yeah. Well, well, well. Thank you. And and if you want to hear that conversation, I think we have that on our podcast. We didn't we didn't record it. Um, yeah, audio only. Yeah, audio only. But you're it's you're in for a treat. It's always wonderful when, it's always wonderful when Jeremy Howard is doing the hosting, and it's always wonderful when Mac Gould is here and gracing us. And just you're just funny. So today's conversation I'm excited about because this is like meant for you. But I'm I need to talk about. We're, we're winding down the series, aren't we? Yeah, we are. This is the last week. Um, in, in case you were wondering, this series is questions from the skeptics, right? Questions and quotes from the skeptics. It took me like two weeks to say that without, I don't know why it was like all the consonants together. I was just <laughs> making up words, but, and, and it's been good. And, and what I love about this conversation and this whole series is just, these are legitimate questions that people have. And we, we could sit there and just kind of say, poo poo, you just are trying to, you know, paint us in a corner. You're just, you know, so difficult, but really these are legitimate questions. We should be answering them. And if we can't answer them, Maybe that's more on us than it is on the person asking the question. That's valid. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, when scripture tells us that we're supposed to be prepared with responses mm -hmm. to things uh, about why we are the way that we are, if we don't have responses, then that one's on us. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and we need to be honest about it. Like, yeah. is Christianity a crutch? Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sick people need help. <laughs> We're all sick people. And just kind of things like that. Or, or we had Chris Willette in, uh, was it last week? And we talked about, um, it, you know, all these Christians, are, they're hypocrites. You know, they, they don't behave any better than people who are not Christian. And we're like, you know, um, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that was such a <laughs> super easy conversation. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like, what do we do about this? So that was a really good conversation. Again, if you want to listen to any of those on the series, you can go ahead and check out our podcast. Uh, and, and you could subscribe to the podcast, by the way, via your favorite podcast provider. Uh, or, or you could just go to our website, keyradio.org. And you could check that out as well. Today is also, speaking of food, <laughs> Komodo dragons eating monkeys. Today is National Lasagna Day and Chicken Wing Day. That's a little more appetizing. I was going to say, I, I choose Chicken Wing Day over Lasagna Day. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really? my personal. And, and raw monkey. And raw monkey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it's, so it's chicken wing first, raw monkey second, <laughs> then lasagna day. Oh, you don't like yeah. lasagna? I'm not, a, I'm not a big lasagna fan, yeah. I don't know. It's So I think the problem is growing, growing up in the... The church, uh, I will say, especially churches that like potlucks, which mine <laughs> growing up did, you get like a, a lifetime dosage of lasagna 
And I think I've just had so much that it's like I, I would be okay if I never had to have lasagna ever again. I can eat lasagna. I'm just thinking I need <laughs> yeah. to go to your church's potlucks because <laughs> I am a lasagna. I love it. I love it. I love it. I don't I don't make it because it just it seems like an awful lot of work to me. But boy, I love eating it. Well, okay. Okay. Yeah. Today's also lipstick day, which I didn't think you guys were going to be um, celebrating. Grant, you're not going to celebrate that, I hope. Uh, no. No. Okay. <laughs> that would be a no for me. <laughs> That's a no go for Grant. <laughs> it's also rain day, but. Not uh, raining. Not raining today. Mm-mm. It's Sunny kind of a, skies, like, hot, oppressive. It's going to be great. Why Why is rain day not in like April? I don't know. I don't know. I'm I don't sure know April, who picks I these. Like would be a I think they just go. Time for rain day. Yeah. So, Heather, you almost introduced our topic. You want to introduce it, Mike? What's that? Do you want to introduce it? No. Good, because I want to share a story first. (laughs) So this is a funny little story. Maybe you heard about it, but uh, there's this man and this woman, and they're, you know, dating and everything, and and they both like to bicycle, like avid bicyclers. I don't know if you just call them cyclists. I don't know exactly, but, you know, they do, like, they have the full gear, and they bicycle for hours and hours. All the spandex. Yep. (laughs) Hmm. Well, anyway, they're from Texas, and what happens is the the boyfriend says, hey, um, you know what? I, I have this new route. Let's just do this today. And she's like, okay. And it's an hour and a half ride, which sounds really great, but they're going through parks and everything, and they'll go down a road, and then they'll go back up the road, and they're going over another road, and then they circle and go back. I mean, it makes no sense. There's not a round circle. It's just willy-nilly, and she's kind of like, this is weird. This bicycle route is it's ridiculous. We just get down a road and we turn around and go right back from whence we came. She's <laughs> getting a little irritated about it. So after the hour and a half is over and they finish the route, uh, <laughs> he takes out his phone. He gets down on one knee, hands the phone to her. The route spelled marry me. Nice. And she went from like oh, wow. really annoyed to the guy like, no, oh, this is so romantic. And so she said yeah. yes. That's funny. That's a cool way of, of, of proposing. <laughs> That's clever. Yeah. 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 Okay, you guys are like, eh, whatever. Nah, I did it. It's like, oh yeah, that's that's nice. Okay, you're obviously not a woman. If you're a woman, I know that you appreciate <laughs> oh my what God. I just said. <laughs> Men are like, yeah, where's the chicken wings? <laughs> it is chicken wing day. I mean, <laughs> okay. Now we will introduce the subject because I just needed to share that. It just made me all happy. And <sighs> so today, questions from the skeptics. We are continuing. This is the last week. Now, this doesn't mean that there aren't any more question this just means these are the major ones that i i found uh today doesn't becoming a christian mean becoming boring mm. Mm, boring Bored. Is boring i was having a lot of fun and now uh now you big lame-o. lame yes exactly mm. and i think this is a good question too um <laughs> and and you know let's just face it i know a lot of I know a few, I don't know a lot of Christians, but I know a few Christians that just kind of suck the joy out of serving the Lord. They might have been cranky either way, <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> yeah. It might have turned out that even if they didn't come to the Lord, they would have been just as cranky. Just as cranky. Hard to tell. <laughs> Hard just to as tell. cranky in their atheism. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that this is a really good question. I think it's really good that we explore it. And I think it's really good that we get some music, get ourselves a hot cup of coffee, and um, enjoy listening to what our good friend, Pastor Mark Gold, has to say on the subject. <laughs> was that? Wait a minute. I don't know what that was. No, Wait that a was minute. Awesome. That, was, that was Luke. I don't know why we have Luke's Luke in there. Luke's not even in there. town right now. How did he do that? <laughs> that but, is but amazing. Awesome. And it was the wrong song, too. Wow. What's well, up with that? What? Someone, whoever put this in there, wasn't yeah. paying a, it attention. It was me. Somebody. Because as a Christian, I am not a boring person. <laughs> <laughs> ha ha! It wasn't me. It wasn't me. That was me. a good segue. <laughs> awesome. That's what we're talking about today. It is not a boring thing to be a Christian, but if you are concerned about that, let us. Let, well, let let's, us, talk about let's talk let's about talk it. Let's talk about it. Let's let Matt talk about it. And how do you want to start us out here, my friend? Uh, My non-boring, cool yeah. Guy well, friend. I mean, we just we can just take the question and start talking about it. Oh, There's is a couple that how things. We do things. Yeah. Okay. First, let's talk in a monotone voice. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Put on the the public radio voice. And now we are going to talk about being boring <laughs> as a Christian. <laughs> I heard that when you become a Christian, some people think you might be boring. Is that true, Heather? Your thoughts. <laughs> Thank this you for the, being with yeah, us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, no crickets here. So, uh, so the the question is one that uh, 
you may or may not have heard i i've certainly heard this um you know hey man i i really don't want to become a christian or devote myself to church and to jesus and all these things because man i'm kind of having a fun time on my own mm -hmm. and christianity sounds like a bunch of rules yeah. uh, and a bunch of rules tie me down mm -hmm. and i don't want to be told what i can and can't do uh, so no thanks and that's that's kind of often the the trajectory of that question right the mindset is like it's all about rules that's not for me um i want to be the one who decides what I do with my life because I want to have fun. Mm -hmm. um, I only get one life, so I want to live it. And uh, so that's a, a super common question. And it's a really important one. And and thankfully, it's not one that as a Christian, we should hear and go like, oh, no, they got us. They figured it out. <laughs> You're yeah, right. This right. is it. The, you found the, the Achilles heel of Christianity. We're a bunch of boring people that just follow rules all the time. Oh, no. Like that. It, it is not that. And so if you hear that question and that, st you know, stirs up in your heart, we should talk about mm -hmm. what Christianity really is. Yep. Um, so the, the the short, sweet answer is is no. Becoming a Christian does not mean that you have to become a boring person. Um, it's that's not a prerequisite. It's not Christian. a prerequisite. In fact, I this is what I think we could talk about this morning is I think it's actually the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. um, that not only is it not about becoming boring, that actually becoming a Christian makes you a an infinitely more interesting person than you were previously. Interesting. So that's that's my argument that I think we can unpack this morning. Looking forward to that. <laughs> my follow-up question would be, hey, that's a good question. How exciting is your life right now? Yeah. <laughs> most Christians, we're not, well, most people in general, they're not really into extreme sports, um, you know, or chess champions or right. maybe uh, marathon runners. Maybe you are or an international spy. But even in those things, I don't think that those things would change necessarily if you right. were a Christian. Right. Right. And, you know? and it's it's interesting because the question, you know, oh, you're you have to become boring. They a lot of times, you know, that's the wording that's used, but people aren't meaning like, oh, well, I can't go bungee jumping anymore right. if I'm a Christian. Right. I can't be exciting. Like it's what they mean is, uh, oh, I assume that your faith means that there are a lot of rules about mm -hmm. what you can and can't do. And I don't want to be told what I can and can't do. No I want cards, to be exactly no like, dancing, no dancing, no drinking, no smoking, no, you know, we, what is the, the phrase? Like we don't dance, drink or smoke and we don't go with girls that do or something like chew. that. Something I like think that. it's chew. chew and we don't yeah. go with girls that do there. Cause yeah. It, it, yeah, it rhymes. It rhymes. Yeah. yeah. We like rhyming, but, but anyway, like that's the, that's really the heart of the question mm -hmm. is it comes down to people don't want to be told what they can and can't do. And, and they want to be the Lord of their life. Mm -hmm. um, they want to be the king, uh, the, the queen, being able to say, like, man, this is who I am and this is what I do because, gosh darn it, I am the one that decides these things. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that is interesting because Christianity is really at its core a surrendering of our kingship over our lives and realizing that there is a greater king who is there to, to love us and lead us. Um, and so in a sense, the part of that is correct. Like, yeah, you can't be king of the world anymore. And uh, if, if you decide, man, I'm going to follow Jesus, uh, you are saying, like, I am no longer the emperor of all things in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and so that can be a little bit terrifying for okay. people at first. So, so convince me. Convince me that being a Christian is not boring. Well, okay. Uh, so there's a, there's this guy, Jeff Vanderstelt, that I'm a big fan of. He's a pastor in Washington State. Um, but one of the things that he, he talks a lot about, like who, what the church is, how the church navigates life. And one of the big things that he comes back to is like, man, as the church, because of who Jesus is, because of what he's done, we talked about this at family camp this weekend, because of who Jesus is, because of what he's done, we then have a new identity uh, and that informs what we do. So it all comes back to who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. uh, and so because of who Jesus is, we of all people as his followers have the most to celebrate of anybody in the world. Literally, like the, I mean, we have a king that loves us, the, the creator of the universe reached into human history and saved us by his grace by sacrificing himself on a cross and invites us into this family and and when we look all through scripture i mean from genesis to revelation what is god inviting us into as his people 
it's abundance left and right. You're seeing like, well, well, what kind of God is he? Well, he's this God that is wanting to bless abundantly. He, he's this God that, I mean, in Isaiah, he says, oh, come and eat and drink without price. And you're like, come, why are you looking to this stuff that doesn't satisfy? Come to me because I'm going to give you stuff that, that always will satisfy you. Um, and we read about bank, the, you know, the banquet table of the Lord, like it's this big party. And so of all people, we have the most to be joyful about because we belong to this king who loves us abundantly like this. And so as Christians, as people that are preparing for eternity with this kind of amazing, loving, abundant king, we should throw the best parties. Like that's his (laughs) argument. Like Christians should throw the best parties because we have the most to celebrate, man. Like we have the most to be joyful about. And so if our lives don't reflect that, like if people come in there, tell me all about this Jesus thing, because it sounds like you're supposed to be boring. And if they leave going like, yep, boring, <laughs> like, man, we as Christians are missing the beauty of the gospel. Mm-hmm. It's like, there's so much to celebrate. So I, like, that's the, I mean, the, the, the synopsis of like, why is this not true? Man, because we serve a God who gives us and an infinite amount of things to celebrate and be full of joy. I mean, like, that's literally what Jesus says. Like, I want you, my followers, to be filled with joy. I want you to experience the fullness of my joy, that your joy would be complete. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, come on. Yeah. Well, and I think, Party that this, time. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this question is kind of challenging the character of God, yeah. right? Because then what you're saying is, if I'm a Christian and I'm boring, that's because God, Christ, is boring. Right. And that's not, like, you just have to look outside. Like, yeah. like you can just look at the sidewalk, and you see these ants that are, like, all over the place. I mean, people are mesmerized by just this little colony of ants, right, because they do so much. That's not boring. Watching ants work is not boring. That's just an ant. Right. And that God has created. So yeah. if that's not boring, and then you look at the cosmos and the mountains and the molecular structures of all sorts of things, that stuff's not boring either. People right. spend their whole lives discovering those things. They, right. they're, you know, you have people who are oceanographers, and you have people who are astronauts, and you have molecular scientists, and they go into those fields because they're interesting. Right. They're fascinating. Well, who created all that stuff? Well, that's the that's our God. Right. Right. So, okay, so that makes sense that we would not be boring because God is not boring. So if we are boring, it's all on us. <laughs> yeah. It just looks a little different. You know, I, I right. have a story. I, I got saved late in life, you know, 37 or so, and we quickly went to Bible school. Mm-hmm. And I'm from Wisconsin, so partying and having fun involved alcohol. Sure. And that's what a, a party was. Right. Yeah, even Christmas and birthday parties, that's... Mm-hmm. That's what it was. Baptism. People, get, bit. people getting <laughs> together, there's going to be alcohol. That's and, right. and, yeah. and so it was, you know, we went to school and we were living in the basement of a trailer. Which is another story. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that trailers had babies. That's yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. An it is a story, yeah. which we'll skip today. <laughs> <laughs> but there were, there were some younger folks living upstairs. And w- one day we were sitting there and there's just a ruckus up there and they're, they're, you know, playing games and, and having fun and having a ball. And my thought is, wow, what's, what's going on up there? Are they, are they breaking school rules? There must be a rager <laughs> up there, yeah. <laughs> I had not seen just Christians having fun and, and goofing around and being like that. So it was a new experience for me. Sure. I, I you know, being pretty new to Christianity, I was like, you yeah. know, I was a little on the, on the side of, of boring. Uh-huh. I, I was committed. Don't get me wrong, but it, it, it didn't. Uh, I didn't know it looked like that. Right, right. So it was. It was an interesting. It is interesting too because our oldest son, oh, he was really young at the time, and they were supposed to do this and for school. They were supposed to have this family chronology, chronology, right? Uh, things that happen in your family, just their little family. And he comes home from school and he goes, "Wow," he said, "We were really boring before Dad got saved." <laughs> 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 that's a complete we didn't do it. anything. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, that's funny. It's all in your perspective. But yeah. let's look a little bit further. Like, let's talk about how do we know that God is not boring? Even, I mean, so we're looking yeah. at creation, but how can we know that God's not boring looking at yeah. the Bible? Well, I think the life of Jesus is a great place to start um, because we look at 
how he navigated life um, and how he interacted with people, like what his relationships were like, what his free time was like. Um, and, and I think it's easy for us to kind of make a felt board Jesus in our mind, you know, where it's like, oh, he's this really, you know, kind of bland, you know, all the, like one or two different poses. Like there's the like, hello. And then there's the like handout smile. And like, that's it. Like that's Jesus, like two options. Right. <laughs> um, and the, the problem with that is like, that's not the Jesus of the new Testament. And I mean, the, the Jesus that we see in the new Testament is, is somebody that was accused of being a drunkard because of the people that he hung out with. And then, you know, I literally, the religious leaders looked at him and said, oh, brrr, no, no, he can't possibly be the Messiah because look how inappropriate he is. He's having too much fun with bad people. My goodness. Um, like that's Jesus, right? And, and so again, um, I think we need to look at, at what he was doing. He didn't shy away from being with people that had a misunderstanding. Like Mike, what you were talking about, like, man, there was this assumption that in order to have fun, Alcohol had to be excessively experienced. Um, and Jesus hung out with people that had that misunderstanding. Um, and he didn't shy away and say, like, no, 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 no. You are sinners, and I will not do that. I will not be around you. He went, and he behaved differently with them. Mm -hmm. um, he celebrated with them. He went and had feasts with them, uh, shared relationship with them. But he did it in a way that was redemptive. And in a way where his joy could be experienced, where he's not getting sloshed like everybody else is, but they're interacting with him and suddenly asking him these these deep theological questions. And he's there to be able to be like, well, let me tell you about real abundant life. Let me tell you about real joy. Um, and these people who are desperately looking, that's the thing, like in, in my experience uh, growing up, I, I grew up in the church left my faith because I wanted to have fun. Um, and so I lived through high school and uh, the beginning part of my college uh, doing the whole, you know, the party scene, man. It's like I, I joined a fraternity and drugs and alcohol was just like part of that's how you had fun. Um, and, and now looking back on that season of my life, I realized that actually what I was doing, I was searching desperately for something to give me joy, to, to make me experience joy in life. And I, what I was looking to was something that was never going to produce abundant joy. It was never going to pr pr produce long lasting joy. Maybe for a couple hours, I might have felt good because mm -hmm. I had numbed out all of the pain in my own heart and was not thinking about it. But you wake up the next morning and you're not feeling great and you're right back to square one of like, man, I am not experiencing joy again. Um, and, and Jesus enters into this experience for each of us and says, like, let me show you living water. Uh, stop coming back to this well water. And you think about the, the passage in John 4. It's like, why do you keep coming back to this thing? You're going to always have to keep coming back. Let me give you something where you will be satisfied eternally. You're never going to have to come back looking for more of this. You'll always have it. Um, like that's a, I mean, right there. It's like, okay, great. I'm sold. You know, like the, <laughs> Jesus is not boring. <laughs> Following him is not boring. Like it, it is, it is something that it's the only thing that we can look to in life that truly satisfies the needs and longings of our souls, uh, that brings healing so that we're not having to look to something to make us forget our pain. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and on top of that, it actually fills us with genuine joy, experiencing genuine joy in life. Mm, this is so good. Ah, you know, the other thing, too, is boring people don't change the world. I'm going to talk about that <laughs> a little bit more on the other side of the music. You are listening to Key Radio Life Unlocked Truth Unleashed. If you want to be a part of the conversation, send us a text, 855-539-4583. It's true, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Key Radio, Life Unlocked, Truth Unleashed. Got Mike and Heather in the morning. Grant at the controls and our good friend, Matt Gould, pastor of Grace Bible Church. In Ooh, can we say it? Yep. Spring. Spring. There it is. That's been a while. <laughs> I didn't know, right? That's been a while. You, you Jeremy, didn't do that? Yeah. No, he didn't do it. It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> <laughs> Too cool to do spring. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mike's laughing at me because um, we were talking about getting rid of things 
you know, just kind of making decluttering. Decluttering. That's yeah. yes, that's a good word for it. And and Mike was just saying how when I declutter, I get rid of stuff, and then he says that hey, six months later, I buy the same thing. But I just don't think that's yeah. true. It's it is true. I no. just I've I've seen it. Yeah, it is just not true. No, it is. There's true. no, no yeah. documented proof that this is a thing. We're kind of at a stalemate here, you guys. I don't know. We need to bring your kids in. What what is which is true? Does your mom get rid of stuff and then buy the same See, thing six months later? The, in their brain, they're just gonna be like. <gasps> It's a trap! <laughs> <laughs> I played the fifth. Yeah. Just, I uh, think you're both great. I have to go paint okay. the house now. <laughs> uh, okay. Is being a Christian mean becoming boring? The Barna Group found that 68% of unbelievers describe Christians as boring. That's sad. What have we done? We've forgotten how to celebrate. I think we have. Yeah. It's very interesting, too, because here's G- we're, we're supposed to be, as Christians, as believers in Jesus, putting our full trust in him and enjoying the freedom that is afforded us because of the cost that he paid right. on the cross. Uh, we need to be emulating him, right? Like every day we want to be more and more like Jesus. Right. And we there's this process, if you've listened to us for any period of time, that's the sanctification process. So uh, God is is fine tuning us, and 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 He's aligning our hearts uh, so that it it is consistent with His way, which is a good way, by the way, which I want to talk about before uh, we finish here today. Uh, but Jesus was not boring right. in the Bible. In fact, um, there were many many people who flocked to listen to Him. I have yet to find a boring person who has like this whole following of people. Right? I sure. mean, really, it's like. <gasps> I just don't see it. And and uh, it was also interesting, too, in the Bible, one of his first miracles, his first miracle that's recorded, right? Wasn't that the wedding in Canaan? That was, in Cana? fact, what it is, yeah. Yeah, and, and people don't approach a boring person to say, can you make no. our party better? <laughs> well, and, and I think that that's, Heather, Does that's this a concern great me, example. Woman? Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a great example of, again, Jesus being not boring, but not just that. It's, it's of Jesus being... Um, like abundantly celebratory um because again the the miracle is is you know he's caring for uh individuals he he's protecting them from shame right he's he's preventing them from being put to public shame let's by, talk about the story a little bit so, so that yeah so yeah. The, the the story there's this big wedding uh, everybody in town goes and jesus and his family are invited so he's there his mom's there um, and, and they are, are having this party and now weddings in the first century weren't, it wasn't just like what we do where oh, a couple hours, we'll hang out, then we'll leave. We're talking about, you know, a multiple days long event where this was something that is, you know, that drawn out. Um, and, and so the, what happens in the story, uh, they run out of wine for this party. And so there's this big feast happening and they, they run out of, of beverages for their guests. And his mom, Jesus' mom, uh, Mary, comes to Jesus and says, hey, here's the situation. You got to do something about it. And, and Jesus really is just like, no, 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 this is, you know, why, like Grant said, like, how does that concern me? Like, this is not my time. Um, and, and then Mary's response is hilarious. She turns to the servants and says, yeah, just do whatever he says. Uh, and then she's out, you know, and it's kind of like, okay, mom, thanks. Thanks, mom. All right. Uh, but, but Jesus ends up doing this miracle where he tells them to fill these ceremonial washing jars, which were used for the, the Jewish legal system to, to purify and to cleanse uh, with washing, like the person had to go and, and wash themselves in these things. That was the intention of them. He says, fill them up to the brim, the very top with water. So they do that. And then he says, okay, now go and, and taste it. So they bring it and it's this incredible wine. It's okay, now go tell the master a feast and you're good to go. Mm-hmm. Everybody's ready. And, and it's fascinating because the, the master of ceremonies like taste this wine. He goes, wait, wait, what are you doing, man? Like you're supposed to put the good stuff out first. Everybody gets a little sloshed and then you put the cheap <laughs> stuff out and they don't notice, right? Like that's literally what he says. And he's like, this is the best wine. Like how have you waited till now to do this? Mm-hmm. And the beauty of this 
is that it actually is a very symbolic thing that Jesus is doing here. And so, yeah, he's providing for this family. He's protecting them from shame. He's, he's helping them in a way that, the, again, the assumption is this is a, probably a poor family that didn't have the means to provide for their guests in the way that it was expected. Um, and so he's caring for them very specifically that way. But what he's also doing is that he is ushering in uh, who he is as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's telling the world at this point— uh, I mean, we're talking about it 2,000 years later, like he's telling the world the, the ceremonial washing system where you had to go make yourself clean. You had to go wash yourself and, and prove to God that you were worthy of relationship with him. And you had to do it again and again and again, because guess what? You're going to keep failing. Uh, that is now done. And there is now something new and something good, and it's a celebration. And it's, the, the, it's abundant, I mean, to the brim overflowing of this, this new good wine. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. He comes in and he does away with this old system where it's on you to make yourself right. And suddenly it's on him. And he says, I've done it. I have made you right before God. It's my blood that was shed to purchase you. And now we get to have this party. Mm, that's yeah. so good. We got a, a text in for a good friend, Chris, and he says, I was trying to find fulfillment in the fraternity party scene at a university when God saved him out of it to the praise of his glorious grace. Life has been anything but boring for the last 24 years. Amen. And let's That's awesome. just yeah. face it. <sighs> you know, those, those, that lifestyle or just being away from the Lord and maybe you, you don't know the Lord, but you've never lived a lifestyle like that or have been a part of a, the party scene like that. <sighs> You know what, even in that situation, it is an amazing thing when you realize the freeing, the, the freedom that you get from the Lord. Right. You don't have to live under the pressure of the rules and the regulations like everybody thinks that Christians have to. I mean, now, let's discuss that a little bit more here. Yeah. There are rules, right? right. Um, but we're looking looking at it wrongly when right. it comes to so explain that yeah so i i think it's important for us to understand again because the the quick assumption is that rules mean bad you know like <laughs> rule says i can't have fun that's what rules do mm -hmm. um especially when it's rules like hey don't get drunk uh, well that <laughs> can't have fun anymore right. you know mm -hmm. um and the the misunderstanding of of why god gives us this direction in life and says like, hey, here are things that I want you to do and here are things that I want you to avoid. The reason God does that, and this is important for us to understand, it's actually what we see in the life of Jesus, is that the the commandments of God, when he points us to something in life and says, man, this is not what's best for you. Here's what is. Again, it's not so that we are walking around as boring people going, well, I can't do that, can't go to that party, can't have fun here. It's, it's actually because God wants us to experience true joy and fullness of joy. And so any of these things that people might kind of quickly jump to as like, oh, well, that's just you being boring. Um, you know, we can actually look and say, well, no, no, no. So, so drunkenness is a great example here. Um, so the, you know, again, we say, hey, it's actually not what's best for you as a human to be behaving in this way where you're looking to a substance to be finding joy. Because actually, what does that mean? Well, theologically speaking, what we've done is we've created an idol. We've lifted something, elevated something to a level that it does not, is not intended to have. Now, is, is all alcohol evil? No. I mean, the, his first miracle was turning water into wine. Um, is what, uh, alcohol to excess sinful? Yeah. And, and why? Again, it's because it's ultimately idolatry. Uh, we are turning to something to find fulfillment and joy and satisfaction that can't provide it, where what God says is, look to me. Why are you looking to this thing that will never satisfy you? Look to me for joy. Look to me for fulfillment. Look for me to, for satisfaction, because that's where you truly find it. And so again, we, we are selling ourselves short if we're looking to these other things saying, oh, that's what it means to have fun, man. Now I can't do it because I'm a Christian. Like, that's boring. No, like what we're missing is the beauty of the gospel, which is, it says, look, God is going to give you more satisfaction. God is going to, you know, if it's if you're turning to alcohol to, to numb out woundedness and pain, God is going to heal those wounds in a way that alcohol never will. 
And, and only God can provide these things for you. And he does it abundantly. It's not just a little bit. Maybe he might. No, this is we're talking about God loves you more than alcohol ever will love you. <laughs> uh, and, and that's the reality. And so, again, it's uh, I think it's easy to kind of turn to legalism when we reduce Christianity to a bunch of rules, uh, when what it is is a relationship. Um, again, it's not a set of rules for rules sake. It's a relationship where we have a loving father who, as his children, he knows what we need, what is best for us. Uh, just, I mean, as any human parent, you, you know, if your kid wants to go touch the, a hot stovetop, as a good parent, you're going to be like, no, don't do that. Like, that's not a good thing for you. Like, it's not going to end well. Now, we could hear that and be like, well, you just don't want your kid to have fun. And that would be crazy, right? Because we know that, actually know that parent is loving their child well by saying, man, here's a boundary and it's for your best interest. It's for your good because I don't want you to hurt yourself. I don't want you to be harmed. There's something better for you. Um, and that's what Christianity offers. Yeah, that is so good. And, you know, the rules, like God is our designer and he's the one who's created us. He knows every hair that's on our head or yeah. lack thereof, right? Hey, <laughs> <thanks>. <laughs> I had to do that. Uh, but he knows everything. He knows about like our blood coagulating system and the whole bit. Uh, so he's designed us. So he knows what's good for us and he knows what will be harmful to right. us as well, whether that be our behaviors or what we're eating or drinking or, or the relationships that we are holding and, and our attitudes. He knows all of that. It would be like if you, I, I was, I think VC, and I know nobody has one anymore, but it's just my point. Uh, you get a, a VCR, and it has an owner's manual. You might be lucky. Now, you use that. Own, do you guys even read those things? No, probably no. not. That's okay. You just but know if you how were, to use it. That's part of the packaging material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you were, you'd flip through it, and you would know how it's designed, how it's supposed to run, how to run the, you know, to program the clock and the whole bit. Oh, no. Right? Yeah, I know. It's still blinking 12. Yeah. <laughs> 20 years later. And all of a sudden, my metaphor dies. <laughs> But, you know, it, if you use it for something other than the purpose of it, uh, then it's not going to work well. Yeah, if you, you put use a it, piece of bread in there to toast it, n- it's not, not going to happen. W- or it mm. probably toast the whole house. Maybe. We, I don't know. But or, or if you use it as a hammer, maybe not such a good idea. Uh, it's designed for a specific purpose. Right. You and I, we're designed for a specific pers- person. It's to, it's to bring glory to the Lord. So I guess, yeah, in a way, we're designed for a s- certain person, and that's right. God, right? Um, but why? Because we we're made for a purpose and we want to fulfill that purpose and in that purpose we find joy yeah. everything else is just a sad substitution and uh, it will never bring us contentment and joy and peace and freedom for that matter right Mm-mm-mm. and our lives are supposed to be the sweet aroma of christ and, right and, exactly and when people look at us they should want what we have and if it's a bunch of crankiness i hope right. that it's going to be attractive well and it's it's fascinating because you you look to uh first corinthians is a great example of this now do we want to emulate ourselves off of the corinthian church probably not they had a lot <laughs> of things going wrong but i think it's interesting that when you when we read the New Testament, what we see is this church that's trying, at least in the Corinthian context, we see this church that's really trying to to do what you know the gospel tells them to do. Okay, we're going to have this celebration feast where we're we're celebrating who Jesus is and his death on the cross and stuff, and it leads to licentiousness, right? Like in in their goal of like celebrating Jesus, it goes too far. Um, and Paul has to correct it. Now, now again, do we want to emulate that? Absolutely not. But I think there's something there for us that the American church misses, which is that celebratory nature of our faith together as the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, again, like what was so worth celebrating that led this church to have to be told like, yo, you got to stop eating that much and you got to stop drinking that much because you're giving people the wrong message. Yeah. You know, I mean, like that's they went that way rather than Paul having to be like, hey, you realize there's something to celebrate about your faith, right? <laughs> you know that we're supposed to be showing people that like Jesus is worth celebrating. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think that it's something that, again, like we, we need to remind our hearts, like, man, this is a celebratory gospel. This is a celebratory faith that we're called into. It's not a, 
well, now I'm a Christian and I will sit here as the, you know, the king uh, judge of all the land and tell people why they're the worst. So, ha ha ha. Like I've arrived. Like that's not the faith. Like the faith is, oh my goodness, look at this king. We are his subject. We're his children. We're adopted as his family. And we get to celebrate at his family gatherings now. Like this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Like this is a beautiful thing. Let's enjoy that. Let's enjoy Jesus together. Let's celebrate. Let's invite people in because that's what the gospel tells us to do. Let's find the randos on the side of the street and tell them, come, come enjoy Jesus with us. Like yeah. that's, that's what this is supposed to be. And so if we have reduced ourselves to this list of rules, man, we've missed it. Wow. Yeah. Um, we have a friend who texted in actually um, listening in Wisconsin. So we're on the interwebs, you know, uh, and I, I love this, this person because um, they're saying, you know, I'm fairly new to living by faith and can have those thoughts, right? Where um, people may think that I'm not partaking in um, what they're doing, that I have become boring but then they say this, I can testify it's the opposite. All those things that I did to fill the emptiness just left me more empty. Right. Living by faith and experiencing the changes and growth through a new set of eyes are awesome. I, I love, love that that's word. Awesome. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, Jay-Z, for texting in. And that's really maybe where we're kind of settling in here, I think, is just when you have a transformed life that only God can do. He's changed you from this little tiny ugly caterpillar to this glorious butterfly, a, a brand new creation, right? There is such joy and fulfillment to squish that joy. And people won't understand it. You might actually end up having different friend sets because they don't understand it. But explain the joy. Right. Explain and let them know, hey, you can have this too. And it's neat because you'll walk through life with a new set of eyes, which our friend here is saying. And and you'll experience God in even the boring things, like True. in family life, in in washing the car, in your job, you know, in all of those things. You're going to be like, wow, wow, I've never experienced life th like this before. When you realize that God is present in everything that we do. Yeah. What, what a beautiful challenge for us today, just to live that out, everything we talked about here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Oh, our time went so fast, and I just really appreciate the time that you've spent with this. Just knowing you, Matt. You can pop. You're not a boring person. Nah. I just, <laughs> <laughs> we had the right guy for this one. Yeah, and I'm like, Matt's got this one. <laughs> oh man, talk to me uh, real quickly. Uh, Grace Bible Church, where yep. do you meet? We meet at 239 South Main Street in Springville, <laughs> uh, 10 a.m. <laughs> <You just made laughs> Sorry, Grant. Grant. <laughs> 10 a.m. Sunday mornings. Uh, yeah, you can find our website at gbcutah.org. Um, sermons are on there. Everything's going. Awesome. Thanks for listening. This has been Mike and Heather in the Morning, a production of Key Radio, located in beautiful Provo, Utah. For more information about the program and the ministries of Key Radio, check out our website, keyradio.org. On behalf of Mike, Heather, and the entire Key Radio staff, have a blessed and glorious day.